Hello, welcome to the Thursday, August 6, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I've mentioned a few times how educational Brad's diaries are. Whenever he writes about malware, he usually includes all the evidence and then walks you through how to analyze this particular malware, usually with sort of a very traffic-centric lens. Now, he's upping his game here a little bit and varied the format. And the latest one that he published today is actually written as a challenge where you get to solve part of the malware and actually try to extract the malware. Now, plenty of hints here. And yes, he also gives you the answer, at least as part of the files that you can download. So again, a great learning opportunity and here even with sort of a little bit of a challenge to solve. Let me got an interesting proof of concept exploit and more details regarding a vulnerability that was patched by Apple in its July update. This update was released for macOS on July 24th. It's now macOS 10.15.6. If you're running an older version, you're vulnerable to this set of vulnerabilities. And it's really a set of vulnerabilities in that it's three distinct vulnerabilities that together can be used to actually execute arbitrary code as root, essentially gives you full privilege escalation. These vulnerabilities also bypass system integrity protection or SIP which is the feature that even restricts what root can do. So an attacker could not only become root, but also install malicious software into any of these specially protected location. So again, there are three different vulnerabilities that are sort of being abused here. All of them have been fixed. And if you are looking for the details, you can find them at the Objective C blog. Now, uh, that blog is usually run by Patrick Wardle, but this vulnerability was found by Elias Morat, a security researcher from Germany. And then we have a second vulnerability actually affecting Apple devices. This one affects, uh, first of all, iOS 13, but can also affect macOS 10, 15. And it's related to Apple's sign in with Apple feature, which also leverages touch ID and face ID, which is why I believe it more or less affects iOS more than macOS. The feature is actually, I think, pretty nice. It uses OAuth 2 as a protocol in order to leverage Touch ID or Face ID to allow you to log in to various websites that support uh, login with Apple. The problem here was that uh, Apple made a fairly basic mistake in its OAuth 2 implementation that it didn't validate the redirect URL correctly, which allows someone to actually steal the authentication tokens. In order uh, to pull off the attack, the attacker has to have the ability to inject a malicious code into a web page that is taking advantage of this feature. So cross-site scripting and the like, of course, uh, would help help uh, with uh, such an exploit. And probably the biggest target here are Apple's own sites, which of course are taking advantage of this mechanism for authentication. So if you are using Touch ID or Face ID to, for example, log into iCloud, then yes, uh, your account may have been potentially vulnerable here. And the NSA released a pretty nice and brief guide about how to limit location data exposure. Well, if you listen to this podcast, you probably realize that a lot of mobile devices that you own and carry with you are collecting location information and reporting them back to various systems. Now, when reading this guide, realize that the NSA's constituency is typically members of the military. So your privacy requirements may not be the same as they're stating in this document. And uh, as always, think about what are the risks here. One thing in particular they're recommending here is to turn off the 
things like find my device settings. Most operating systems, iOS, Android, do have a feature that allows you to find your device once it got lost and stolen. Realize then particular in iOS, if you turn off the find my iPhone feature, you will also turn off some of the protections to recover your device if it gets stolen. So what you have to sort of think about what's more likely my phone getting lost or stolen or someone going to Apple uh, to request my location information. But overall, the guide is really solid and has a lot of good ideas if you are concerned about location privacy. And I just want to note uh, with uh, the explosion in Beirut, Lebanon, uh, yesterday we are seeing already some domains being registered that are using keywords around the event. Uh, So be careful out there. And if you see anything odd or fishy, uh, let us know. At this point, it's only a handful of domains and they don't seem to have any malicious uh, content yet, uh, just essentially uh, parked domains. But of course, the event just happened. So it'll take probably a couple days for this to spin up. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.